Welcome everybody and uh, thank you to uh, the third webinar that we're running uh, about artistic swimming. Um, we're, the webinar today is ideas to increase your revenue streams. So we um, hope to help you to be able to use this downtime productively and also to inspire you. Um, so my name is Katie and I am the co-founder of Acrobatics. We're the world's leading water entertainment company and we're also the um, creators of the first online artistic swimming courses. So we're gonna dive straight in and talk you through the agenda for today. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about what is artistic swimming. And uh, we're gonna introduce the, the panel that we've got for to today's um, panel discussion. Uh, then we're going to talk about why we're here, the ideas to increase your revenue streams. We're going to have a discussion between the four of us um, and then open it up to the floor. Then we're going to tell you a little bit about uh, Experience and Explore and Expression, the two artistic swimming courses that we have created. So I'll hand you over to Adele. So what is artistic swimming? Um, you may know it more as synchronised swimming. Um, the IOC decided it wanted to change the name to artistic swimming to bring it into line with like artistic gymnastics and it kind of describes the sport a little bit better as well rather than just focusing on synchronisation. It's also a, a fusion of gymnastics, swimming, acro acrobatic movements and dance. So you're mixing all of those skills together in the water. It's an Olympic sport. It has been an Olympic sport since 1984. Um, nowadays, you get the duet event in there and the team event. Um, and hopefully soon, perhaps the next Olympics will also have men competing because um, currently it's a female only sport in the Olympic Games. Um, as mentioned, you have a team and partner event, but there's also the individual event um, where you can be very expressive um, with the music in the water. But it's also an art form. So it's not just a competitive thing. It's also an art, um, expressing yourself, being creative in water and using the water in many ways that aren't always perhaps shown or encouraged when you're younger. It's suitable for all ages and genders. So a lot of people think of artistic swimming as being very female dominated. Actually, many boys do it. Um, and they absolutely love it as well. Um, and it's great for all ages because the water supports the body as well. And it brings in that group mentality, group working together, which is such a great thing for adults. And it's fun. That's the most important thing. It's a really fun activity with lots of variety. Okay, so now we're gonna introduce ourselves so you know who we are. Uh, my name's Katie Freed um, and I started uh, artistic swimming when I was eight years old. Uh, on the same day, in fact, as Adele, um, and we have been swimming, performing, uh, training together um, you know, all throughout our professional, our, our amateur competitive careers, um, and then have remained lifelong friends. Um, so during my competitive career, I was the world finalist, um, national team champion, duet champion with Adele, um, as an artistic swimming coach. Um, for our club, we went on to uh, coach our team to win all important record trophy. Um, I that once I uh, uh, came out of my competitive career, I went into event management and uh, managed a mass participation in sports events. And then um, Adele and I came up with the idea for acrobatics, and uh, we we founded acrobatics. And obviously, I'm still uh, the director. So I'm Adele and um, I'm a Commonwealth medalist um, as well as world finalist in artistic swimming. Um, after I finished competing, um, I went on into coaching. Um, so along with Katie, we coached our club Rushmore to national titles. But I also started working with um, some young athletes um, and coaching them up who actually three of them made the Olympic team in 2012. Um, so that was pretty amazing to go on that journey with them. But I ended up also working with the um, performance center as the high performance manager. Um, so went to the 2008 and 2012 Olympic games with the synchronized swimming team. Um, I was also a swimming teacher. So I decided I wasn't in the water enough as a competitor. And alongside that, I began swimming teaching, um, teaching toddlers, toddler and parent classes, right up to adult classes. So I kind of understood that progression right through to then digress and into the other aquatics and the pathways. Um, and then as, as Katie, co-founder of Acrobatics. So after the 2012 Olympics, 
I moved over to acrobatics full time um, and started working on what we call the more fun side of it um, and doing really creative stuff, not just um, coming for live events, but also getting really creative under the water for productions um, and photo shoots. Hi, I'm Sunay Hutchison. I'm joining you guys from South Africa today. I have been, swimming has been part of my life since ever. I can remember finishing school, I started doing competitive swimming. And then I left South Africa when I was 18 to go start traveling around the world. And I had the opportunity to travel around quite a bit of different countries and was able to work as a teaching assistant um, in different countries as a swimming teacher. And so I had opportunity to work with amazing coaches all around the world. Um, and then about 13 years ago, I officially got my SDA qualification and then um, was in the UK and had my own business there for, for about, lived in the UK for about 13 years. And then seven years ago, we came back to South Africa and I became an SDA tutor here in South Africa doing courses. And then also I was crazy enough to build a very big pool and <laughs> before having a very small um, facilities, went into a very big facility in the beginning of the year, just before lockdown. And yeah, we've been running a swim school here in South Africa now for quite some time. And we've got at the moment, we've got quite about 410 kids coming through our door weekly at the moment. Yeah. I'm Zoe, I'm STA's commercial director. Um, I've been with STA over 10 years now, which has been a wonderful journey. Um, outside of work, um, I've had an extensive career um, in synchronised swimming um, as a competitor, former British champion and international swimmer. But uh, also as a coach, I um, love to give back to the community and I've coached at um, Novice all the way through to elite level. So it's it's been wonderful. And of course, I've been a member of Aquabatics for I think nearly 12 years and had the pleasure of obviously um, performing Britain's Got Talent with the acrobatics team in the final, which was amazing. So, yeah. Fantastic. Thanks, guys. Okay, so why we're here today is that we really feel that we can help swim schools and swim businesses increase their revenue streams, particularly at a time where we're facing pool closures, you know, lockdown where the pools are shut. We want to help you find ways of creating more revenue once you go back. Um, so we've got this panel discussion today, which I'm going to hand over to Zoe to lead on the questions and to host. So Katie and Adele, <clears throat> obviously you created um, alongside STA, the, the world's first online um, autistic swimming CPDs, and they are our most popular selling CPDs. Um, so how did you come up with the idea and, and where did it come from? Well, um, as you know, and I hope we, we want to, you know, come across today that we are very passionate about the sport of artistic swimming. And we're, we're on a mission um, to share that love for artistic swimming at a grassroots level, you know, far and wide across, across the world. Um, we want to bring it to the masses. Um, it's not currently accessible for either um, swimming instructors or participants, or not easily accessible, I should say. Um, you know, there are uh, very few clubs um, across the country for artistic swimming. So um, for a participant, it's not that accessible and also for uh, an, a swimming instructor. They are currently have to do a, a lengthy and quite expensive course to be able to um, teach artistic swimming. And you really would only do that if you wanted to go in at club level um, to do it. So what we want to do is empower um, swimming instructors with the, the basic skills of artistic swimming so it really takes away the, the myths around it really you know there are lots of things the basics that and progress through to much harder and move um, and skills that we can teach and we we have done within our um the courses is to show you that actually it's not as difficult as you might think and you can do it and you can start at a grassroots level even by just adding it as a contrasting activity um uh, within your lessons um, you know, we, uh, we want, it's a way of uh, retaining swimmers um, and you can, the skills that you can learn from the courses that we've developed, you can utilise them in, in so many different ways. I think as well, in my experience as a swimming teacher, um, I've done quite a lot of taster sessions um, with boys and girls all around the country, kind of all different ages. 
um, and they absolutely love it. We just try out the basic skills with them. Um, and the boys are getting to do things they're often told instruments to do, like tumbling on the water and, and hands. And the girls find they really particularly love the dance element and working together as a group and expressing themselves. And quite often when I'm working on these taster sessions around the country, um, the kids, the kids' parents, the other small instructors like, where, where can we learn to do this? Where, how do we, how do we do this? And like Katie said, in the past, it's been expensive, long courses, residential courses you have to go away with. And we were like, well, actually, you could really learn this online. We'll give you all the video tools to do it, um, to learn this, many of which you kind of learn anyway. Um, it's just adding to that and progressing it. Um, with, as we're, you know, for example, sculling technique, um, we're masters in sculling. So we show you lots of different ways how to master that and then how to progress it in different ways to do it to keep the kids' interest. Um, so we really feel that, that, that those sort of skills, if you learn it, you can add it into the lessons. Um, you can retain the swimmers, the interest, but you can also then run taster sessions. Um, you can run holiday courses, birthday parties, all of that, which perhaps might interest many more children and keep them in the sport or attract new business for you because you're offering um, something different. Yeah, I think you've just touched on my next question, uh, Adele, actually. So how would um, adding these autistic swimming courses into my into my Learn to Swim programme kind of help with revenue streams there? So I think you touched on, obviously, you could do your taster sessions, um, the contrasting activity side of things, uh, crash courses. Um, is there anything else? Did you mention hen parties? Has that been a success for you then? Yes, we've, uh, we've done... Um, so along that line, so with... Younger participants, you can do birthday parties. So, you know, we've, we've run quite a few birthday parties and they've been hugely successful. Uh, so generally for, for younger children, birthday parties are you know, for, for boys and girls. So they, they get to try out new skills, all of them together in a big group. Um, and the birthday parties, they're a huge success. Um, and then obviously moving on into to adults, you can have the hen parties, sport for activity days, um, you know, you name it we've done it um, in that respect and everyone is a huge success because they, they learn the basic skills they come together and they perform sort of a mini routine at the end of the party so it's um you can do it with music you can do it without music so yeah it's a very very popular activity that would be very for someone that does our courses it would be very easy for you to add that as an extra um offer in a leisure center or as a swim school you know as long as you you have access to that full time it's something that you know you can add um, and in the same way with either a standalone taste session or um, uh, a week on holiday course. So at most of those the swim schools do crash, crash courses half an hour a day to um, improve swimming. Um, but you, know, you can do that with artistic swimming. At the end of that, they can do a performance. You can uh, produce uh, certificates. We're in the process of, of uh, producing participants' certificates. Um, so it's... Yeah, what by doing the artistic swimming courses you're doing something different you're offering something different within your swim school or your leisure center or you know um in many ways it's just you're doing something you're offering a different service that you know some of your local leisure center down the road might not be offering and i think as well um to attract adults perhaps if that's you know you want to attract more adults into your lessons if you're looking at that um, category and um, it's a great thing for mental well-being and um, particularly group activity once we get out of lockdown and are allowed to do that again um, you're working together as a team you're making friends um, and again with the kids as well as adults that's a really big thing you're going to want to go to your sessions more if your friends are there if they're relying on you if you've got a little sequence together and you're part of that sequence and formation you're gonna, you know, want to turn up more for that, which is great. Um, again, making sure they turn up regularly. Um, so that's a, a great thing there with the adults and it's fitness too. It's a really great way of fitness and you don't always realize you're getting fit because you might be tired out, but you're having a lot of fun with it. It's different. Um, but it's also for um, retention of, particularly we lose a lot of girls out of swimming, particularly late childhood, teenage years. Um, you know, we lose them. And to, if they're already in something that's, like I've mentioned, the group thing, the group element, the friendship element, you know, they'll wanna go, they'll wanna go more, you know, perhaps swimming up and down the competitive route isn't always everybody's thing. Um, and a way of that dance, that express and movement together, 
um, or even as an individual, will help hopefully retain those swimmers that will just leave when they're 10, 11 years old um, because the swimming laps just doesn't interest them. Um, so we really want to, you know, <clears throat> help you to really expand and your ways of using water um, to retain your current uh, your current members, but also again, like we keep mentioning, attract new business to you. Those who perhaps might not necessarily be looking for just swimming up and down or the competitive route. Yeah, and another um, another key point as well that we. Um, we want to get across is within the course of quite a lot of um, life-saving techniques so a lot of the skills that um, you would learn how to teach are actually would help um, save somebody's life within the water um, so there's the, the sculling there's all the, um, uh, the flotation there's um, egg beater they're all skills that you can learn how to teach quite easily um, add them into your um, regular swimming lessons um, and it all helps with participant safety and I think a lot of the viewers, sorry Adele, I was just wanted to touch on, um, a lot of the viewers I can guarantee will be struggling with pool time right now and would probably like to integrate something like this but may not be able to fit it in their programme. And what I love about it is the certificates that you've produced that are coming out in the new year. Because obviously they've got 10 learning outcomes. So if they're working on a 10-week term basis with their swimming lessons, they could do one element of your course during a contrasting activity. And at the end of that block of lessons, the student will walk away with their standard award, but also an artistic swimming certificate from you guys. Um, so that's a way of incorporating it, I suppose, into your lessons without having to look for additional pool time and hours. Yeah, I think that's a really, really valid point. Um, and also um, with the extra things that they're learning, um, like I said, it will already enhance their swimming skills. So what we show you with sculling, for example, will really enhance what they've learned with sculling, but also that will enhance their swimming stroke. Um, the artistic swimming strokes, the way we do them um, and the, how that strengthens particularly your legs, um, the way that we do them will again then help with the actual standard swimming stroke. So not only then can they walk away with an extra certificate, new skills, but they're also enhancing their current swimming skills. Funny. So you've been running in South Africa, your own business, for quite a while now. Uh, why were you so enthusiastic about taking this on? Well, to be really honest, Zoe, my business has changed quite dramatically in the last year or two. Um, first of all, I have seen a great deal um, influx of children of different cultures and different races that, that want to learn to swim. Where before it was quite a stigma against it for swimming, I think. But now people are much more keen into sort of getting involved and they have for the first time, I think, opportunities which you've never had before. You know, so it's very exciting. And that, that's kind of where, you know, it's all, it literally changed 90 degrees to where I thought we were end up to where we are now. And um, so I've, I've kind of looked at it and think, well, how can I use it? How can I make it for my clientele that has changed so drastically? What can I give them more, you know, to add to our lessons? And, and, um, I mean, one of the things that I use, we've, we currently started coaching during the COVID um, at a high school. Because of the COVID, they had to separate their students, you know, where normally you would get a whole bunch of them together. And now all of a sudden you've got 16, 17 year old boys and girls that are water polo players, because the pool gets divided in one half for the water polo players and the other half for swimming. And you've got all these kids and you need to teach. So what I did, and one of the things that was a big complaint with the coaches were that obviously during the lockdown, these kids have lost you know, a lot of muscles here in their, in their arms for, you know, for shooting with water polo. So I did our last two sessions, or the ones after I've just started doing my first CPD, I brought in some of the sculling into the lesson. And I tell you the noises that were coming out of those boys that are quite fit. <laughs> water polo players like 16 7 year old and apparently i was still the talk of the next day at school as well afterwards because everybody was in apparently quite a quite a state but they worked their arms and the, but that sculling it just it just added another thing and when i started going with the, with the program and it's stuff that i've used you know obviously for my cpds of my um, that i've done with you guys 
the coaches were all standing back and go, oh my goodness, why haven't we done this before? You know, um, partner, you know, obviously we couldn't do a lot of partner work and stuff, but I mean, just the sculling, the, um, the underwater stuff for the polo players, you know, it was, you know, to get them, you know, bigger lung capacity because we've had obviously how long of not doing anything. Um, so that was amazing to see. Um, for us again, um, you guys were touching up a little bit of the life-saving elements. Here in South Africa, if you are, a, you know, there's three major sports afterwards in, in your swimming career. You either go for life-saving or you go for water polo or you're competitive swimming. That's it. There's no other option. You know, and there's a lot of kids that don't fall into those three brackets and to give them another option, I think, would be amazing. You know, after that, I already spoke to the high school that I was at and said, hey, you know, can't this be something that we can bring in into the school as another curriculum for them? So they were busy looking at that. And it was literally when I, when I did mention, and, and it's something that nobody thought about before. It's, you know, we, oh, why don't we try this? I think it's a lot of times that's the problem. We don't, it's, you need to think out of the box. And I think what this has helped me a great deal is to think out of the box you know, as a coach, it, you use things that, you know, we all can just sort of teach like this, you know, if you've done it for many years, but then you take on something like this with acrobatics and they literally, it opens you up a bit to think a little bit more. Right. And you had literally no experience in artistic swimming before you undertook the courses. And I know you were a little bit nervous as well. Thinking, <laughs> I did this, so it's completely alien to me. So how did you find it when you actually went through the course and kind of that support there? And did you feel confident, I suppose, post the online course that you could deliver? To be really honest, in the beginning, my biggest thing was the, you know, the choreography and that kind of thing. I was like, that just looked for me so overwhelming. I mean, if you see me dance, <laughs> I'm not the most elegant person on the dance floor and that was something that puts me off you know because I'm like most of our coaches we're all practical a type personalities that you know we we work things out in a straight line you know and then to tell me I need to be free and add movement was just for me in the beginning very very scary and then I started actually doing it and when I looked at it it is just like teaching it is basically just like teaching you just have to find your rhythm and your routine, how you add it. I mean, my biggest thing in the beginning was I was trying to change too much and try to fit in too much with, with the program. And when I actually stepped back, I started using the program to suit to me. I didn't have to change my way of teaching. There was so many help. I mean, the videos, it was amazing. The videos were really, really good during the CPDs. Um, I mean, normally we say, the SDA says about the CPD takes you about two or three hours. I can tell you this thing had me glued for much longer. You know, it was how many times save and exit and come back and save and exit and coming back again to carry on where I left off. So I really enjoyed it. I mean, if, if somebody like me that's got no um, flair like that um, can sit, I've been really practicing with my points in a circle and moving it. That was such an amazing explanation, you know, how to move the, the choreograph from where you put the points and you can move. That made so much more sense to me. And I started playing with that. And as soon as I started doing that, I realized, hang on, this is not as bad as what I thought in the beginning. Oh, brilliant. And I suppose the beauty of the course is, is that actually, if you want to do the choreography part of it and there's the support yes. there to go on and do it, you can do. Or you can just integrate the basics of sculling um, and kind of the egg beater and obviously the basic key moves of synchro. It, it, you know, you don't have to go so, down that choreograph route if you, if you want to. And, and do but I mean, there's beautiful lesson plans. I mean, there's step by step. I think there's six step by step lesson plans. I mean, it couldn't be more easier for you to start off. And it's the same as what you think about back to the manual with, with, with the SDA. We, we, you cover a topic. And then there's lesson plans how to teach it. So it is, it's, if we've done any other previous CPD points with the STA, it's exactly the same. It just it helps you, you know, to carry on. It just leaves you further for more, if, it, if you understand. It opens the gate for you to go further with, with, with it. I've actually just seen a question flash up on the screen saying, do you need a music license? The answer to that is, um, I firstly ask your leisure centre, whoever you're operating, because they might have a, a PPL license because they might be doing Aquafit. Um, so you might be able to just utilize the music. There is um, music out there that um, don't need a PPL license. Um, 
as well to use. So you can utilize that. Or in the CPD, Adele, there is, um, you can do it via taps um, and just counts. So you yeah. don't have to do everything to music. Yeah, so we teach you how to synchronize um, your participants without music. Um, so we have, obviously we count at like dancers, we count at eight. So you can either be um, shouting the counts out and getting them to count it whilst they're swimming, or we show you how to tap on a step with a spoon, which is a beat or like a, just a beat. Or you can, if you have a music system there, you can use a metronome if that's easier. Um, or you can use it on your phone, play it really loud, a metronome. So it's just a beat that keeps them in time. Um, but obviously, yes, yeah, so if you want to go down the music route, which is fun for birthday parties and things like that, when you're a bit more confident, um, then quite often sports centres do have a PPL licence. So check that out first. So Sunny, um, how are you going to utilise it to increase revenue in your um, swim school moving forward? So especially during this time, I mean, we, we've been, I'm very strict, especially during this time, we've been having every Monday meetings, staff meetings, and then we plan for the week, you know, how we're going to, you know, we do obviously our scheme of works for the, for the term, and then how we can integrate. And we started this last week with backstroke week with us at the facility, and we brought in the sculling and, um, you know, into our backstroke lessons. I can tell you the kids loved it we had such an amazing report back from our customers you know about how much fun it was and it's so lovely to look at you, you you start with something and you walk on pool deck and you look across and you see all the different coaches adding their flair or their little element to it but they're using it you know and like i said we started off with warm-ups adding it into our warm-ups and in our contrast activity but it has made such a difference to the physical stroke as well um, we've seen such an improvement in our in our strokes, you know, this week compared to other weeks. So definitely in that in that aspect, I'm going to keep it and keep going with it. You know, next week is breaststroke week, so there's, I mean, already how many things for breaststroke um, that we can use already, and it, it's so nice because it it has given my coaches again a, how can I say, a good boost till the end. You know, we are. To be honest, we're all tired. We've been working, you know, during this whole COVID and it's quite stressful to keep, you know, your swimmers safe, yourself safe, uh, make sure that everybody around you is safe and yet make it fun yet and learning, you know, especially now, I think more than ever, your lessons have to be much more effective. You can't just do a very blase sort of lesson. It has to be, you know, we, and we do it for all ages. I've started... Um, I would love to send you guys a little video. I've got a three-year-old who were teaching, you know, um, just a little tub, the oyster, the oyster to close up and then jump up. You know, it is so cute. And that was a pure contrast thing that we, we've started playing with. You know, and it's, you, it's a safety survival, you know, touching your feet, the bottom of the pool floor and jumping up. But then we just added, added a bit of flair to it. And they loved it all. What I also liked about the course is you give your participants also some time to come up with new things. You know, it's a great way to say to them, okay, you're not allowed to use your arms for next thing. How can you use it next? And it makes them think where before we always just sort of tell them what to do. You know, this gives a, a change. And I tell you, we've picked up stuff that the kids have come up with this week that I'm going, man, that is awesome. I'm going to use that in my, in my teaching further. And that's just giving them a little bit of freedom um, in our lessons. Um, yeah, so we definitely, and then, I mean, we do at the moment um, birthday parties and we had a mermaid party the other day. With this now, can you imagine how much more fun our mermaid parties are going to be? Or, you know, um, another thing that we do a lot is, corp you know, like, um, Corporates are doing team building. So we've already got a team building coming up in the end of the year. And we said to them, well, let's try and do some art, you know, artistic swimming. And they were super keen. And it's men and women. And they're all keen. So we're going to do, definitely do it in our team building um, exercises that we, that we do with people. Yeah, following on um, there from Sunny, <clears throat> I actually ran a corporate team bonding thing for the McLaren pit team. Um, probably about 10 years ago when Lewis Hamilton and Jensen Bunt, uh, Button were their drivers. Um, and Lewis actually turned up on poolside. He didn't actually get in, but um, all his pit team were in there. And it's the first time they've ever, all men, been put in a situation in water, learning a predominantly what was known as a 
uh, female sport. So everyone was a bit apprehensive, but they absolutely loved it. And it really had, had to make them work together. Mm. Um, and yeah, it, was, it certainly achieved their kind of brief of what they wanted to achieve from a team bonding session. So it certainly works as well for adults as it does for children in that sort of situation. Um, but I also wanted to also talk about, um, I was having a discussion earlier in the week with someone who mentioned about NASA astronauts and training in water because it's the closest thing we have on the planet to have that feeling of weightlessness up in space. Yeah, and how in water you can achieve things you just can't on land. So the way that you can move your body, um, you know, and you know, you're not gonna hit the ground or anything like that, but you can really experiment with how you can move your body about how you can move and like Sunny said we just don't in traditional swimming lessons give time for anyone to really experience that feeling um, which we can't do really anywhere else um, so I think that's a good point as well. Question. Katie can I just ask obviously there's two courses do you need to undertake both courses to be able to deliver or what's the difference between the two? No, well, no. So the, we, the two courses, the first one is called Experience because it's all about experiencing um, elements of artistic swimming. Um, and it takes you through uh, the core elements, the core ski skills. And once you've done that um, CPD course, you can definitely deliver everything, all the content within that, all the skills, all the drills, everything. The second course, ex um, Explore and Expression. So that's more about exploring what the experiences that you learned in the first place. So exploring those skills, going through the progressions. And then it's about um, it, the expression. So as Sunny's touched on, it's about letting your participants express themselves in the water, find out how they can move in the water that they can't on land and, and move in ways that they don't in a regular swimming lesson. Um, and then trying, once they've, once they've learned though how to express themselves, how to move in water, then trying to apply that to those skills um, that they've learned as well. So that's so then the, the final progression is then linking all of those skills together to put together some uh, simple choreography. The, the, the sense of achievement that those participants get at the end of that is, is really incredible. Um, so you don't know the answer to the question is you don't need to do both in order to teach it. Um, it it's advisable because then you've got the, the breadth of those skills, you've got the progressions um, that you can definitely start with, with experience and then take up um, exploring the expression. You can buy uh, the two as a bundle, um, and the, but the great thing about these courses is that you can pick them up and put them down whenever you want. So you can start if you get sidetracked, you've got to go to work or whatever. You can do half an hour, you can save an exit and come back at any time. And then, you know, once you've gone through them, you can flip back um, at any time. You have access, um, you know, forever for the courses. And I think I did see on the screen pop up, and I know we'll go to questions, but um, someone did ask um, if they're qualified to deliver the basics of artistic swimming on completion, if they're a level two certificate. You can actually do this if you're a level two award holder as well. So it's not just the certificate. So as long as you've got the level two award um, or Swimming Lens level two um, certificate, then you are qualified post um, attending the online courses. So, can I add, if you, if you did the first one, you definitely do want to do the second one. That I can guarantee. <laughs> and we're, we're not paying her to say that. No, we're not. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, Brett, have we got questions? Can we open out to the audience? Uh, we have, Zoe. We've got um, a couple yes. coming through. Um, so first one from Nicole. Hello, Andrew. Um, she asked, do you need a certain size or depth of pull? Um, no, so what the great thing is about artistic swimming, actually I prefer to teach it initially in a slightly shallower pool anyway. Um, I think that really helps the participants get their confidence with it. Um, and even with underwater confidence as well, you might wanna go a little bit deeper, um, but certainly with more beginners and thing, it's great to have the kind of shallow depth. Um, and there's lots of movements we do that are just on the spot as well. So you don't need a massive pool to kind of move around in or anything. So um, you can certainly do it in any size pool and any depth. And my pool is my pool is 1.2 meter. So it is not a huge, very deep pool. And we've managed amazingly and actually got such good results. So yeah. Brilliant. Thank you for that. Um, okay, so the next one is from Johnny. Um, he asks, is there a preview of the CPD so that you can get trailer 
snippet of what it's all about. Uh, yes, yeah, if you um, go to the, our website, so artisticswimmingcourses.com, you can actually uh, register and you can try before you buy. So there's a, a snippet, if you like, um, of each of the courses. Um, so you can see the layout, you can see how they work, and you can see a brief um, sort of description of, of what's included. Brilliant. Thank you for that, Cote. Um, okay, so moving on to the next one, again from Johnny, um, who asks, what age group do you find artistic swimming leans towards? Um, is it more um, for teens or um, what, 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 what do you reckon the age group would be mostly? I would say um, it's all ages, but I would normally start introducing it. Well, you can introduce, like um, Sonny was saying, like the three-year-old, you can introduce little skills like that. I always introduce sculling very early on as well um, because it helps a, the kind of flotation, the body awareness stuff. That's all really great for youngsters. Um, but moving on with that, I would say sort of from six, seven years onwards, um, I would certainly be incorporating it a lot more. Um, and again, any age, so you can just, if you've got a group of teenagers never done it before, they're going to react really well to it. Um, and again, with the adults, um, so any age group, but certainly from six, seven years onwards, um, you know, that's a really good age to start with. Thank you, Adele. Okay, so one more from Shelley. Um, she asks, upon undertaking the CPD, how can I gain additional support if required? Um, so after the after you've taken the CPD, we do you can register for our community Facebook group. Um, so once you've done it, well, there'll be a link to that, and you can join, and then you can um, questions, anything like that. You can contact us on that, um, or contact us on our emails, and we'll be willing to sort of help you and talk you through any anything you have any queries on. Yeah, we're also um, we've done one, um, and we plan to do many more. Um, live from the pool series. So we, um, if you haven't, haven't, haven't had a look already, then please do check it out. So that we're actually live in the pool, as the title suggests, and uh, we go through sculling to actually show you um, how to teach sculling and what it would look like um, by a professional doing it, and then how you teach it and what it, what to look out for. Um, so that was the first um, Life in the Pool series webinar that we did, and we plan to do more. So that's also going to help you to um, understand the skills and how to use them yeah we have children in the pool doing it with us so you'll you'll see what you will come across when you're actually teaching it um, as well Fantastic. i have to say those was very great for me those ones that you did the pool sessions to actually see how to teach to the to the students or to swimmers it was really great to see that that sort of made me gave, gave me more confidence as well to go ahead so those sessions are amazing definitely brilliant thank you um okay so we have a question from helena uh, she ha asks can you practice artistic swimming and offer to students during social distancing does artistic swimming work without physical contact like touch and keep distance in between swimmers or dancers? Yes, it does. So, and particularly with our experience as well, um, most of those skills, um, again, they're all individual skills. Um, we can show you how to even work in a formation. You don't have to be close in those formations. Um, you can spread them out. Um, so that works well as well. Um, and even in teamwork, you can create these formations and shapes without having to be close together. Um, so a lot of it, um, in fact, most of it you can do without having to worry about, you know, participants being too close or breaking any balls like that. It, it suits a team environment, just keeping with the regulated distance. Thank you, Adele. Um, okay, so we've got one more question from Johnny. Um, he asks, where is the Live from the Pool um, series? Where, where can you find that? Oh, you can uh, find that on um, our website. Um, uh, actually, no, hang on. That, I've got that wrong, haven't I, Zoe? It's on the STA yeah, website. Yeah, it's on the STA website. Um, I'm sure, Brett, we can send a link to the participants that are attending today following this webinar. That'd be great, uh, wouldn't it? We, we can, yes, and I'll, uh, I'll put a link in the chat box as well for everyone. Thank okay. you. Okay. Um, oh, we've just had one more question in from Kimberly. I have the ASA Level 2 Synchro Teaching Qualification, which I did many years ago. 
uh, with Jenny Gray at Cobham Hall. Oh, I did that too. <laughs> Jenny Gray, she's the best. Is the content of the CPD similar to what I would have covered? I, I, I don't mind answering because I'm a level two um, and I obviously I train with Jenny Gray. She's amazing as well. Um, I think synchro now artistic swimming has changed so much over the last five years that you will definitely find something new, unique and different in this course. So I think um, I would definitely recommend it because you will definitely pick up a couple of golden nuggets as you go through it. Definitely. Thank you, Zoe. Um, okay, so we've got another question from Helena. Do you teach holding breath techniques and is it similar to free diving? Uh, oh, yes. This is an interesting one. You can touch on shallow um, water blackout and our partnership. Yes, yes, we do. Um, we do teach uh, uh, breath hold um, uh, skills and drills. So we make it very fun. We make sure um, we emphasize that you must never um, you must never encourage your participants to uh, try and beat each other. So I can stay underwater longer than you can. It's very important. They need to only go as far as they can go. But we d there are many um, breath holding techniques that keep it fun um, for the participants. And we, we have a partnership with um, Shallow Water Blackout um, in America. So we're there, there's information on that um, within the courses as well. Brilliant, thank you for that. Um, okay, so that is the questions at the moment. Um, I'll, okay, I'll thank you so much, everybody, for your time this morning. Um, and if anybody has any questions, obviously we'll send out the email with the link and contact details. So thank you. Yeah, thank you everyone for attending. We we hope um, we hope we've inspired you in some way to uh, to check out artistic swimming a little bit more. It really is the most wonderful sport. Um, and if we can try and spread that grassroots across the world, then that, that would make us very happy.